What's up, YouTube? Coming at you guys with a little video today. We're going to be talking about our police in America and how their policies are totally failing, and I'm going to prove that. The first way I'm going to prove that is, if you guys want to, feel free to look up the policies and how Norway handles things. Let me give a good example. America has the most incarcerated people than any other country in the world. Um, that's a fact. And then, you know the crazy thing? We have, I believe, the most police-related deaths, if not we're really up there out of all the countries in the world. So, you know what's really crazy? If you read about Norway, they have like the least amount of incarcerated people in the world. They have like zero deaths from police shootings. Kind of just proves that the way that the police here police and the way that their policies are written cause more violence and more people to be locked up and incarcerated than any other country. The way that we have written those laws, the way that we have taught police to police the streets. Let me read a little article thing. In all of 2014, police in Norway fired their guns exactly twice, killing not a single person and injuring no one, according to statistics released by Norwegian police. And the last year is more the rule, or last year, and the last year is more the rule than the exception. The table below shows the number of people shot and killed by Norwegian cops in 2002 and 2014. Deaths at the hands of police are an almost unheard of phenomenon. So, the numbers of people injured by police firearm use tell a similar story. But the tables... Uh, what the fuck? This thing just... I lost where I was reading that. One second. Okay, I found it. But the tables above are not indications that Norwegian police never use their weapons. The table below shows the number of times police have threatened individuals using their firearms. And it's very, very low. 2002 was 70. 2003, 72. 2004, 67. 2005, 52. 2006, 75. 2007, 65. 2008, 55. 2009, 58. 2010, 75, 2011, 66, 2012, 58, 2013, 58, 2014, 42. It has literally gotten better there. Wow. Okay. Even, the th even though the Norwegian police do brandish their weapons, they rarely fire them. Following the table or the following table shows the number of times police have fired their guns. 2002, 1, 2003, 1, 2004, 5, 2005, 3, 2006, 3, 2007, 0, 2008, 2, 2009, 3, 2010, 6, 2011, 1, 2012, 3, 2013, 3, 2014, 2. In the wake of deadly police violence in the Ferguson, Missouri, New York City, and North Charleston, South Carolina, the United States is engulfed in a fierce debate over the use of Forced by law enforcement officers, the frequent killings of unarmed citizens by police officers across the country have raised serious questions about whether the U.S. cops are too willing to pull the trigger. Yes, they are. They do it all the time. They literally killed someone a few weeks ago for thinking they had weed because they illegally detained him. He was not breaking the law. They tried to pull him over. They had no reason to pull him over. He wasn't doing anything. Okay. I'll get back to this article. The lack of police firearm violence in Norway likely has to do with the fact that most Norwegian police are unarmed. Not so with Norway as whole with the 31.3 uh, the 31.3 firearms per 100 people. The country ranks 11th in the world in terms of the rate of gun ownership. But private ownership of a gun remains tightly regulated and is mostly limited to country's hunters. Norwegian gun ownership is dwarfed by the United States' staggering rate of 101.05 firearms per 100 people, a statistic that makes Americans in the world's top firearms owners. 
With so many guns floating around, it's virtually impossible to imagine a scenario in which U.S. cops would never agree to disarm like their Norwegian counterparts. Because of a lack of data, it's impossible to say whether the U.S. police are more likely to fire their weapons once they are drawn. But this data from Norway at the very least speaks to the possibility that police work can be done in far less violent way than often happens in the United States. On this anecdotal evidence of the deaths at the hands of police, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, and Walter Scott are enough to illustrate the vast disparity between American and Norwegian police work. The fact that Norwegian police release these statistics at all is also a remarkable phenomenon. Efforts to combat police violence in the United States have been hampered by the lack of reliable statistics in the absence of government figures. Media organizations have begun systematically tracking the issue. So far this year, 587 people have been killed by police, according to the Guardian's count. So, I mean, there you have it. I, I mean, you could always take a trip to Norway, I guess, or just read up about it. But from that simple little thing there, what did we get from that? Well... Our police love to pull their firearms out. There's nothing wrong with brandishing a firearm if someone is acting threatening or violent. I don't see that as an issue. But there are many, many situations where the police in America pull their guns and there is nothing that the person that they've tried to stop is doing at all. We need to end that. It starts with the way that they police. It starts with their policies. It starts with them knowing the U.S. Constitution. They should be graded on the U.S. Constitution. They should know that before they're ever hired as a police officer. Or they should not be able to get a police job at all if they do not know the Constitution whatsoever. That should be the first thing that they have to ace or get a B or whatever to pass. They should have to do a great job on that. They should have to know the law. And then they should also go through de-escalation courses where they actually teach them how to handle things with the public without escalating situations. If we did this, we would see so many less deaths and so much less incarceration. And if we would just stop locking up the majority of our you know, whole population, well, maybe our fucking economy would grow and more people would have money. There'd be more jobs and there would be less poverty. Just a thought.